world's super interesting and it gives you so much to see how far you can go with just one instrument. I think that's actually crazy. And when it comes to playing the harp, and I've noticed, that, um, especially in your video for the object, that you're very expressive with it, and I really enjoy it. So for 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 people who are looking to be more expressive with their music and really be able to sort of be in tune with it, what are some of your suggestions? How do we get into a good groove with with the music that we're playing, so we're not just concerned about playing the right notes? Yeah, um, I recommend playing concerts um, because um, when you practice, like at least that's my experience when i practice um i sometimes do get in the mood but i really feel it when i play for other people um and then it suddenly makes sense what i'm doing there and that i'm doing it you know and um there's always this connection with the audience and then i i get expressive and i feel like oh maybe I improvise in this bar or I don't play what's written down there or okay I really enjoy the break and then continue or whatever and um this feeling um it's I think it, it's at the same time uh, being in the music and not thinking about the score but being in the music and also at the same time reflecting yourself like seeing yourself from above looking down and seeing the audience and seeing oh wow you're doing this for them and they're there for you and this all works together um and um i think if you want to work on your it's on your musical expression you have to play for other people because that's the moment where it all makes sense you know what i mean yeah, and you get a kind of feedback, I guess, from an audience that you it's not the same as you're playing with yourself or by yourself. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and going back to the different types of music, I have come to learn that you have studied with different kinds of harpists as well. So you have talked about triple harp, um, the Baroque music uh, that you study uh, with some of the people. And then you have also studied classical harp playing and Scottish harp playing. How do you find the experience of studying with so many different um, types of music? Does it confuse you? Because I, I, I can see myself getting quite confused easily. How do you manage that? And and how, what do you enjoy about doing uh, all kinds of different studies with your heart? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it definitely is a good thing if if you don't change your music teacher too often, I think, um, at the harp especially because of the technique, I guess you know what I mean. Um, different people have different techniques. Um, but, um, with the different styles of instruments, there comes a different technique, um, automatically. So this is not really, um, the thing. And that I studied in Scotland, that was, um, also a lucky incident that, uh, um, that I did my Erasmus there. And um, they allowed me to do both their classical and uh, Scottish Klarsach with Heather Downey, uh, which was really great because I, I went there thinking I could only do classical, but I was allowed to go to the um, yeah. Scottish Harpers as well. Um, and of course, it just um, it, it just makes your whole horizon much broader and um, brings more uh, freedom into the whole thing. I think it depends on what you want. I'm not the type of person or I'm not the harpist who says I'm specialized in early music um, before Bach and I only play historical informed music and I play on a super historical instrument, super correct, um, like researched music. And I, I love people who do that, you know, but I'm, that, that's, I'm not this type of person. I'm also not the type of person who says, okay, I only play, um, Irish music in a West Ireland style from Cork or whatever. Um, but it's also good that these people exist because they keep up the tradition and the research and whatever. Um, and I, for myself, just found out that I like the broad approaches, um, because 
it's all super interesting and it gives you so much to see how far you can go with just one instrument. I think that's actually crazy. Yeah. yeah, and so the diversity of harp music um, that I've come to know after looking into harp has been quite amazing. Um, yeah. There are just and even the the physical design of the harp it varies from you know areas in the world to another, and yeah. like you said, it's it's all very similar but so different, and there are so many possibilities. And I think it's wonderful that you are able to explore many of that. And if we were to expand our music horizon uh, and and we don't we're not necessarily in a place to buy multiple harps or travel to many different places in the world do you have any suggestions on how we might be able to so sort of expand our our harp view a little bit where might be some good resource to to look into oh i guess um i guess that depends on 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 people you meet i guess i mean of course you can do harp you can do research in the internet and you can uh just for the crack type in harp in spotify and <laughs> you will get all sorts of different results you get you will get the cora from africa you will get the south american harp and uh, you, you can do that and then you can try to play along or whatever but i guess it's um it's people you meet even in your hometown there's uh, you, there's people from all over the world in every town i guess worldwide isn't it and um if you're open enough and um if you talk to them and then you try to play together that's that might be a start actually and then not at the, the same thing with the improvising um not being afraid about wrong notes or Oh, am I allowed to do that? Am I like I sometimes ask myself the question: Am I allowed to play Scottish music, although I'm not Scottish, you know? Or am I allowed to play um, a Turkish song, even though I'm not Turkish? But of course, if somebody shows that to you, or you really like that song, I think you're allowed to do whatever you would like to play. And what are some of the projects that you're working on that you might? be uh, willing to share with us that we can we can see in the the next little while from you um yeah so you mentioned the the cd um with my folk to flout which was released last week um so uh, which is also on spotify since this week i think we'll so definitely you- post a link to that for our viewers because yeah. i really <laughs> enjoy the music Yes, and also um, a CD with one of my Baroque groups was released at the beginning of February. Um, so you also can listen to that. That is really beautiful Baroque music from actually Europe and South America. Um, because we have our, our, our um, recorded player does some research on South American um, Baroque music, uh, which is really beautiful music. And uh, I recorded um, a, a couple of CDs last year. Um, actually, not not just because of Corona, but also because of Corona. Um, I think I recorded five or six CDs, but they all um, they're all not published yet. Um, but they will come out, I think, throughout the year, maybe in half a year or so. So these things um, will, um, will be online soon. And I also have another video uh, on my to-do list, um, which I also recorded with Ralf Kleemann. Also, he's also a harpist in, uh, in Germany, uh, who recorded the Oak Chick. And I recorded another tune I wrote, um, but we still have to cut it and we have to edit it. And um, maybe that might be published by the time this video comes out. I hope so. It's on my to-do list here. Um, we'll see. And, uh, yeah, then we're, we're kind of waiting for the lockdown to end, or, well, we're not waiting for the lockdown to end, but that the whole situation improves, I guess, worldwide. So, um, if this is kind of maybe a little bit over and, um, we can start playing concerts, then there will be loads of concerts, because there will be loads of concerts anyway, and the concerts who couldn't take place last year, who, which got put in this year, so I think all the concert calendars are super full. Unfortunately, the year only has uh, 365 um, days, but at the moment it looks quite like quite a busy 
concert summer. And I think we all hope that all the concerts will take place. Yeah. Have you planned to go to a concert? We Maybe have in here in uh, Canada, in where I am in, I'm in the West Coast, there is actually a, a show called the Winter Harp. And they come by every Christmas. Um, in, it's like a traveling um, music yeah. show. And we missed it last Christmas because of uh, the pandemic. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to be able to go to um, see them when they're able to travel again. And yeah. I feel like, yeah, like you said, there's so many concerts that have to get rescheduled. We we need to make up the lost time. And I yeah. like how heavy I would like some imaginary spare time <laughs> to go to all of the the lovely music uh, concerts and whatnot. So for sure, um, you have a degree in teaching, and I have a passion about teaching. I want to talk to you a little bit about teaching, if you don't mind. What's your philosophy around teaching the harp? How uh, you talk a little bit already about starting with improvisation. Um, what do you see as some of the, the key things for you as a harp teacher to, to instill in students or maybe, maybe just music in general? It doesn't have to be harp specific. Yeah. Um, so that would be, um, these, these two key, key things, I guess. Uh, which is what I said about um, improvisation and being open towards the instrument and um, not to critical be uh, not to be too critical with yourself and that side and on the other side a good technique <laughs> and no yeah I know this is always the thing uh, classically trained harpists say but I think if you have a like um, and a good technique doesn't mean that you have to play super fast and videos. It's not about uh, that at all. I just mean that um, if you um, have a healthy, physically healthy approach to your instrument, mm -hmm. that is a door opener for any musical world, you know. And um, if you like, if you can play the harp um, with a um, with with any technical style, but only up to a certain point, I think. And I don't. I, I'm 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 not saying that I have the perfect technique. Not at all. There's different types of technique, and um, there's different hands. There's big hands. There's small hands. Every hand. Small hands here. <laughs> yeah, small hands here, and big fingers. And it's always like, yeah. Um. Anyway, you know what I mean. Like it's um it, with technique, I don't mean like. It's super, super virtuoso or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah, just, I, just... I, I think I do know what you mean because coming from a person also with small hands and mm -hmm. not a very big, you know, body, and I, I, I do find there are some limitations when it comes to how I play the harp. But what I do appreciate is when my teacher is teaching me a method that works well for my body. Instead yeah. of saying you have to do this way because this is the only right way or, you know, the other ways are wrong. I think that is so important, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I have not experienced that when I learned the harp. For me, it was more like, um, yeah, do, do it like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. And I think mm -hmm. that is so important because I, I personally think that approach helps me to be more comfortable with my instrument for sure. Right. When I'm, I, when I don't feel restrained by a certain posture or a certain way that I'm able to sort of adapt my playing depending yeah. on the piece. Cause the different music also call for different, slightly different techniques or slightly different, you know, ways of approaching it. So I think, you know, going back to sort of your exposure to the many different types of music and whatnot, I think it goes the same for techniques. If we, if we have if we have knowledge of more of them and we're able to pick and choose, it, it yeah. works out better than being stuck with one particular uh, way for sure. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I also want to see if you can do a little improv for us. Because you have talked about improvisation a lot and I know yes. that you do it quite a bit. Can you, can you do a little improv for us on your content? Okay. Right here and now. Wow. Cool. Right here. There, there's no <laughs> warning. This is definitely an improv. <laughs> that is a nice, th that's a nice surprise. Um, I like surprises. I love surprises. So, an improvisation. So, an improvisation now. Um, 
as a surprise, a real surprise in her, uh, I guess would be something I'm, I was thinking about today. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was thinking about uh, today, I, um, I was thinking about my grandma. It's not, it's not really, really sad or something, but she's in the hospital right now. And, uh, so I was, um, what's happening with her on the phone when I was thinking about her. And, uh, I tried to play an improvisation for her, maybe. That would be lovely. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing it. I think this is a lovely way to uh, to to um, you know say hi to your grandmother, and also a lovely yeah. way to convince us that it is a good idea to learn how to improvise. Isn't it? Yeah, and it's, it's super easy if you know how it works. It's like cycling. It's, uh, oh, I, I mean, there's no way to know how it works, but if you if you know you can cycle a bike. Mm -hmm. you, you know that for the rest of your, your life, you know, and it's, true. it's just, um, yeah, believe, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it comes from, it's come, it become a part of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, do you start a lot of your composition with an improvisation? Is that how you would normally start writing a piece of music? Um, and actually not, no. It's, and oh. that's an interesting question because I, I haven't really thought about this. Um, actually not, no. I, um, like the compositions, like the pieces I wrote so far, um, I had a distinct idea. I had a particular idea or I had, um, a particular thing I wanted to do on the harp, um, technique wise. Or I had a, a theme in my head, or like not not a theme, but um, something the piece is about, mm -hmm. and then I would work on it actually, like um, trying different things and more really thinking about it and um, thinking about the the structure and maybe thinking in, in colors or feelings or or something like this which should be connected to the piece i think it was never really a, a improvisation maybe then at the end um to um, um to, to finish it to make it uh, a piece then i then i can fill it with improvs you know um but the composition started with um thinking yeah have you composed uh i haven't i have tried uh transcribing a piece of uh, piano music that uh, a friend of mine wrote into the harp and it was a very interesting exercise and I've always uh, been challenged by my teacher to compose but I don't know where to start and I, I feel like it's just probably one of those things that I just need to give it a shot without thinking too much about it because I think yeah. the more I think about it the more I go into the analysis paralysis you know like all the adult yeah. learner oh we're not good enough we, we can't do this right so yeah 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 uh, I know I know what you're saying yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Um, how can we stay in touch with what you're doing? What are some of your uh, media, social media outlets that we should keep an eye out on? Um, um, the, the best would be my Instagram profile, okay. which I have since half a year. My cousin convinced me. I was always against Instagram. <laughs> my cousin, <laughs> uh, my 13 years cousin, cousin said, how can you be a musician and not have Instagram? 
in 2020, you know, how could that happen? I said, okay, all right, I'll, I'll do that. And now actually I think it's, uh, I, I like it more than Facebook. Mm-hmm. And you can also find me on Facebook and uh, you can send messages and I will get back to you. Um, but more news I will um, post on Instagram or on my um, website. Yeah, we'll include the link to your website and also the different groups that you're involved in as well. We'll put that in the video description. Thank you so much for this conversation. I really enjoy listening to the Triple Heart. And then, of course, I think the surprise in Prof was also very uh, pleasing. I loved it. Thank you so much for doing that that for us. Thank you. Uh, Hope to talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.